When the AirTags were first announced, there was one thing I was especially looking forward to test, and that was how good are the AirTags at tracking parcels being shipped overseas? Well, I thought about shipping one to a friend abroad, but that just didn't seem that interesting to me. So instead, I shipped three. One to Tim Cook at Apple's headquarters, one to Elon Musk at SpaceX, and lastly, one to North Korea. I was gonna send a fourth one to the White House, but a lawyer advised me against it, warning there could be national security implications. So I thought, yeah, all right, suppose I won't send one to the White House. Now I will say, if there was any test that proves just how effective the AirTags are, it would be this one. Honestly, this project was so interesting, and you're about to find out why. Now, the first thing I want to address is, is this even legal? I tried to find information on the legalities of tracking a parcel, and well, there's not a lot of information out there. So I got in contact with some lawyers. The first lawyer I contacted was from Germany, and he didn't see any legal issues in tracking a parcel with an AirTag. The second lawyer I reached out to was from the US, and he had this to say. Legally, you should be fine including an AirTag in a package. You're not tracking a person, but a package, so you shouldn't run afoul of any privacy laws. He then started going on about how the AirTag would deactivate after three days, acting like you knew the product better than me. Come on, mate, stick to your day job. Second thing, do I really think Elon Musk or Tim Cook will get my package? Honestly, probably not, but maybe. I'm sure the both of them receive a lot of fan mail, and for that reason, there could be some form of redirection or mail forwarding put in place. So if either of the parcels make it to the intended destination, honestly, I'll be more than happy with that outcome. Last thing, North Korea. Shipping items to North Korea from the US is not an easy task. In fact, due to strict economic sanctions imposed by the United States, all mail to North Korea is regulated by the Office of Foreign Assets Control. So at the moment, only first class letters and postcards can be sent. But I live in Germany, and it just so happens that DHL is one of the few logistics companies that still offer shipping to North Korea. Why North Korea? Well, the intention here certainly isn't to be in any way provocative, but there's a lot we don't know about this country, especially from a technology perspective. Like, do they have access to the internet? Or do they even own iPhones? Well, unless they have both of those, the air tags will go completely undetected. But fear not, I came across a website called Stack Counter, which claims to have data on North Korea's smartphone market share. And according to them, iPhone is the second most popular smartphone in the country, second to Samsung. But what's weird is, just last month, Apple was number one. I had to dig deeper into this. So I dug through this website to try and understand where and how exactly they get their data. It turns out they have their tracking API code installed on over two million websites globally. With this tracking data, they're able to extrapolate which country a user is from and which device they're using. I dug even deeper and found out that they even provide the sample sizes of their data for each country. For North Korea, the smartphone sample size was 538. It's not a lot, but it's good enough for me. So we begin this journey on DHL's website. Tim Cook's parcel will be sent to the famous Apple Park headquarters in San Francisco, one Apple Park way. The package to Elon Musk is going to the SpaceX headquarters at one Rocket Road in Hawthorne, California. Man, both these companies have their own roads. Respect. At this point, it occurred to me that I needed a mailing address for North Korea. After some browsing on Google Maps, I noticed there was a German embassy in the center of Pyongyang. Perfect. I found the address for the embassy online, and of course, entered it in. I made sure to include track and trace shipping for each of the parcels so we could compare DHL's updates with my AirTag updates. Boy, am I glad that I did that. I also made sure to declare the AirTag on each of the customs forms. That way, no matter who receives this parcel, they know that there's an AirTag inside of it. It was the right thing to do. With the shipping labels printed out and slapped on these envelopes, I prepared the AirTags. Apple got the Unicorn AirTag, SpaceX got the Alien, and North Korea just got the standard one. Now, I didn't want to send the AirTag by itself. That would just be weird. So I wrote a friendly letter for each of the recipients. Basically, I told them about this project, asked them what they thought about it, and then asked if they could sign and return the air tag to me. I then took this opportunity to throw in a Dogecoin for Elon Musk to send to the moon. With that all done, we were ready to rock and roll. I dropped off the parcels on Friday the 7th of May in the afternoon. A few hours later, I could see that the air tags were on the road, making their way south. 
Right from the get-go, this was really exciting. DHL don't inform you when a parcel leaves the post office, so I already had more information than one would normally get, which I'm not gonna lie, was pretty cool. While the air tags were on the road, I was getting updates every 10 to 15 minutes or so. Not bad. The parcels made it to a packet station in a city called Langenfeld, where they spent the night. How cool are these 3D views? When I woke up the next day, I realized my packages had made it all the way to Frankfurt Airport, but I had no update from DHL. Three days later, the AirTags were still giving me regular updates, but the parcels hadn't moved at all from Frankfurt Airport. I got my first update from DHL on the parcel heading to SpaceX, which told me, the shipment is transported to the destination country slash destination area and handed over to the delivery organization there. Yet I could clearly see that the parcel had not yet left Frankfurt. I kept my eyes peeled to watch out for any movement, but nothing. Come the 12th of May, Apple's parcel had received the same notification, yet also no movement. We were now at the 14th of May, a full week later, and all the parcels were still at Frankfurt Airport. I was so confused and really frustrated. To make matters worse, the North Korean parcel had no updates at all. Elon's parcel did move to the other side of the airport, but that's about it. On Saturday the 15th, it finally looked as though something was happening. The packages for Apple and SpaceX had moved to what looked like a loading bay. They were ready to fly. Now it was late in the afternoon and there weren't many flights left for the day. So I checked if there were any cargo flights bound for America. I came across an Aerologic flight that had an unmarked arrival destination. I had never heard of this airline before, but I found out that they were half owned by DHL. So I had a good feeling that this was the flight. As I tracked the flight just a few minutes after takeoff, the arrival destination was added and it was heading straight for JFK airport in New York. I woke up at 4 a.m. the next day to screen record the landing. Not long after landing, we had confirmation. My air tags had made it to JFK Airport, New York in the USA. Oh, it was a sight to behold. I checked DHL's website for an update, but nothing. I only got an update from DHL two days later on the 18th of May, informing me that Apple's parcel had arrived. Thanks DHL, I already knew that, two days ago. What's worse is Elon's parcel didn't get this update until the 21st of May. Why? They were on the same flight. On the 19th of May, DHL had notified me that Apple's parcel had cleared customs and was ready to leave JFK. But nothing happened until the following day when I received a notification on Find My. It had picked up the signal of Tim Cook's parcel in Nevada and like in the middle of nowhere. I knew straight away that it must have been picked up mid-flight. So I jumped on flight radar and found a flight that had already left from JFK and was very close to where my AirTag had been pinged. Unbelievable. Most likely someone's iPhone was connected to the internet mid-flight, made a connection to my AirTag, and that location data was then sent to me. Ooh, what an age we live in. Surely enough, not long after touchdown, I get a second update from the AirTag and it was in San Francisco. Check this out. So sick. Now Elon's parcel was still at JFK airport and sadly still no update on the North Korean parcel. I was starting to get worried about it. The next day, Apple's parcel had arrived at a local post office in Cupertino. The US Postal Service had then notified me that the parcel had been picked up by the recipient. Eventually, I could see it was on the road and very close to arriving at Apple Park. I was so excited. I thought, this is it. But it didn't stop there. It kept going. It eventually stopped at what seemed to be some kind of logistics center. After spending a few days at this logistics center, the AirTag was finally on the road again. Hope was restored. And finally, on May 24th, it arrived. I was over the moon. I mean, look at how cool that looks. So sick. On the same day, Elon's parcel had made it to California. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pick up on the flight it took, but things were starting to fall into place nicely. On Tuesday the 25th, Elon's parcel arrived at a local post office and began heading towards its final destination. And what do you know? It made it. Unbelievable. Honestly, I had no idea if any of these parcels would make it to the intended destination. And the fact that two have so far was mind blowing. But on the North Korean front, things weren't looking too good. The parcel still didn't have an update and it was still stuck at Frankfurt Airport. I was devastated. 
So I tried contacting DHL, who told me I need to submit an investigation to find out what was going on. After doing that, I was told I would need to wait an additional three weeks before I would get an answer. Not okay with me. So I decided to send another one. This time I decided to try a different North Korean address. So I stumbled across this website for a North Korean film festival commission. I don't know, but it had an address and it was good enough for me. So I repeated that whole process again and sent that bad boy on its way. It made it to Frankfurt and was chilling with the first North Korean parcel. <laughs> now here's the great news. On May the 29th, I got an update from DHL informing me that the second package is now on its way to the destination country, meaning it's eventually going to go to North Korea. So if you want to find out what happens to that parcel, be sure to subscribe. I really didn't want to have to split this video into two sections, but it's already been almost a month now, and I really wanted to get this video out there for you guys. And of course, I'll be following up on what happens with the air tags that were sent to Tim Cook and Elon Musk. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out this video I made where I intentionally left three valuable objects in public to be stolen. And of course, they had air tags attached to them. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next time.